Are you tired of complicated backend development processes? Are you looking for a simple backend as a service solution? Look no further than Upright, the open source backend server for web and mobile applications. When starting a new project, we always need a database to store our data, authentication, functions to execute some logic, and file storage for pictures and assets. With Upright, you have all of this ready for you at a glance. Together, we'll see the different options we have to set up an instance of Upright, have a dashboard overview, and see how to deploy API functions. Plus, we will be using an amazing React app template from Upright to build a to-do list with user authentication, database management, and API calls. Get ready to simplify your backend development process with Upright. We have different options to deploy an instance of Upright. The first one is to host it yourself, going to the public repository on GitHub, which contains soon 30,000 stars, and to go to the installation instruction, so based on your platform or your server platform, and follow it. The second option is the fact that Upright is currently creating a cloud version. It's in private beta, but you can request an access here. And the third option is to use LSTO, our platform, to deploy your open source software Upright. So go to LSTO, hit login, then deploy my first service. In the list, search for Upright, select, hit next, and create service. We will receive an email with our instance credentials as soon as it is deployed. It takes generally two or three minutes. I just received an email telling me that my instance is ready. So let's go to click here to get the password. Here I am on the dashboard of LSTO to manage my instance. I have my password available here. I copy it and I have the link to my instance. So I will go to it. I arrive on a login password page, but it's uh, related only to your instance. So my email and my password, it's in my clipboard, I paste it. Now it's asking me to create my first project. Let's name it to do app because later we will build one with a template. And when we arrive, we have this uh, good looking dashboard with a getting started guide. It's asking me what kind of app I want to build. So is it a web app, a Flutter app, an Apple Android app? I guess Apple is for iOS and macOS. I have the access to write functions from a server. So the API key and the webhook. The first thing I usually like to do is to find the documentation. So hit support and go to docs. I know that upright documentation is quite complete. So you have the installation guide. It's what uh, we did automatically for you with LSEO. But if you need to do yours, it's quite useful from here or from the GitHub repository. You have all the different documentations per platform and all the global concept that you will face using upright. So let's do a quick overview before using the template and creating something using upright. So we have the authentication. Here we can create manual users, but we have ready to use functions to uh, create our users. We can create teams, see our usage, add some security. So how many users you want, the session length and the limit of session per user. On the global settings, you can enable all the way you can log in to your upright project. And here are all the OAuth to providers ready to use. You just have to enable them. So let's choose, uh, for example, Discord. You would have the instruction on how to do so. It will lead you to Discord documentation. You enter your app ID, your app secret, the URL, and you can enable authentication from your app with Discord in a minute. There is also the database section that we will deep dive in later. We have the functions, we will create one later, but it's like creating serverless function that you can trigger in a different way. And you also have storage, which would be your local Amazon S3, but it's open source and it's on your server. So let's create our first project using Upright. On the Upright organization on GitHub, there are many different templates. And let's start with the to do with React one. 
So there is a guide on how to install it. So let's follow the instructions. We need to add a new web app. Here, web app. Name, to do app. The host name, we will keep local host because I will run it on my own browser. But of course, put the right one when you need it. Hit next. Then I need to create a new collection with the following properties. So, okay, let's go. Uh, this I can skip. I will go to database and create my database. So it's to do app. Inside, they asked me to create a collection. So let's create it. They don't care about the name. Okay, so to do's. The to do the collection, it contain attributes. So let's add the content one. It should be a string. And the max size, I think, is 255. It has to be required. And OK, hit Create. There is a second one, which is, is complete, to know if our task is complete. So attribute key is complete. Here, it's a Boolean. Is it required? No. And no default value. But we could set it to false. OK, so create. So it's a very visual and simple way to create attributes in your collection. What other type do we have? We have integer IP, URL, enum. I guess we can create some elements here. OK, when you hit space, it creates new elements. OK, perfect. It's only those two required now. We need to define permissions. OK, so what we will need for this project is to go to settings to add the permissions to all users. But let's look at the other options we had. We can add any, so everyone can do anything. All guests, all users, we can select users from our user base, but it's a manual thing, but in some cases you can need it for team or you can even create custom permissions. So let's add all the permissions. Okay, now what we need to do is to set up our environment. So here I cloned the project. We have the environment.example, but we need to define our environment variables. So the endpoint is available in the settings. Let's copy the API endpoint. We need the project. The collection ID. So the collection is here. This is the database ID, but we need the collection ID, so it's here. Oh, it's in the order which is like this, I guess. And we also need the database ID, so it's here. Perfect. Let's save. Let's run npm start. Here I have the project running. It's asking me either to log in or sign up, but I didn't create an account yet, so let's create one. Now my account is created. I can add some to-dos. Record a video about Upright. Edit a video about Upright. I can uh, select this one that I did it. And let's look at our collection on Upright. So now if we go to our documents, we can see we have the two elements. The first one is not defined because we didn't set a default value to false. And this one that we checked is complete equal true. And of course, if we reload, we have our tasks still available here. Let's look how easy it is to integrate with a front-end application. Let's look at the sign-up. Uh, sign up, create account, so it passes email, password, and name. It's using API. 
API is the use of upright SDK and it's calling account, which I guess is the authentication module from upright create with the values and it will create the account on your instance. You didn't have to write that part of login, security, authentication, authorization. Okay, now let's go to the functions. You can create functions either using the CLI. So from here you have all the information on how to do it. Or you can create them manually. So you name your function, let's name it hello world. You can select your runtime. You can edit the function ID, but you can leave it. It will generate it for you. You can set up the execution access. It's the same than the database, so you can have the same policies. You can define what kind of events will trigger your function. So it can be a front end or a back end calling your function from upright but you can also add some events happening on your upright instance. Let's say you have an image uploaded to your bucket. So a file is created. Maybe you want to trigger a function that will resize it, process it, and store the different resolutions of your image. So this is a workflow totally doable using upright. You can also schedule your function using the cron syntax. So every day at three hours in the morning you want to execute your function. This is something you can make. And you can add variables and they always be passed to your function. So it's like an environment or secret variables. And hit create. And on each function you can create a deployment. So using the CLI or uploading directly the files. Soon there will be CI CD with GitHub integration. And you can see your usage the different executions to debug and see the logs and you can edit the settings that we set when we created it. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this overview of Upright. If you want to discover new open source software weekly, don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel. And if you can't wait until next week, I highly recommend you to watch this video here.